Hello, my friend. This is Clyde. The repair shop is opened 24 hours. We're reading from Ephesians 5, verse 31 to 33, which says, For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let each one of you in particular so love his own wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. There is something about the repair shop. The repair shop doesn't force you to come to see them. They hardly ever have to advertise. In fact, in many instances, they have a backlog of work. But in many ways, we need a repair shop for such things as motor vehicles, furniture and appliances, computers and cell phones, eyeglasses, bodies, marriages. Mm Mm-hmm. Let us talk about the last item, marriage. For full disclosure, we are following the scriptures as they are. Our text is part of a larger portion of scripture that speaks specifically to marriage, a man and a woman being legally married. That is a standard that the writer maintains. In this instance, he raises a strong comparison, or should I say a model, and speaks directly to married folks to follow that model totally. He clearly states that marriage is a mini version of the dynamic and eternal relationship between Christ and the church. In this case, the husband is to Christ as the wife is to the church. So it makes sense that if we need to understand marriage, if we desire to have a successful marriage, we need to learn Christ and the church. That is how we produce medical doctors and lawyers and engineers and actors and other professionals. They learn their craft by going to school where they are taught the body of theory around their chosen profession. And then upon graduation, they are certified as having the fundamentals to be admitted into their field of choice. However, these professionals know that they will not always get it right, and so a system is put in place for them to have continuing education, for them to be assessed, for them to be disciplined if they do wrong, and for them to be readmitted if possible. That is the repair shop philosophy. So back to marriage. The writer speaks to the woman first and presents to her this ideal picture. The church is in relationship with Jesus, and this runs on submission. The church submits to Christ. The wife submits to her husband. The question is, wife, do you understand how the church submits to Christ, and are you prepared to do likewise to your husband? At this point, I say that the church is exclusively devoted to Jesus. The church does not practice devotion to any other God. Jesus only. That is the essence of submission. He lays it aside and then he turns to the man. He tells the man that if you want to be a husband, you have to commit to loving your wife in the same manner as how Jesus loves the church, except in the case of the husband. The writer elaborates. Yes. Men, are you ready for this? Christ loves the church, but in an effort to get the church, he demonstrated his love by giving up his life. That is the secret. His death won the church. In going forward, everything that Christ does in this relationship with the church represents his love for the church. He loves the church so much that the church is his only concern 100% of the time. And he is constantly doing things so that the church looks good all the time. In fact, Jesus does not withhold any good thing from the church, including his total devotion. Jesus is faithful to the church all the time. Husband, you are required to be totally and completely faithful to your wife. It's an imperative, not an option. When this man and this woman have each got a full understanding of this exciting relationship with Christ and the church, when the man and the woman are convinced that they get it and that is what they want, then they can proceed into marriage. For this reason, and this reason only, shall a man leave his father and his mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. 
Let that last sentence soak in, because after you are married to this woman, after you have become one flesh with this woman, the door is closed to any reason for you to be unfaithful. You do not, I repeat, do not have permission, freedom, or the option to have an affair, to have sex with any other, to stop loving your wife. You are locked in for good, like how Christ and the church are locked in together. You cannot be one flesh with Mrs. Brown and simultaneously trying to be one flesh with someone else. Not only is it wrong, but it is a transgression to your marriage. But what if you do? Men, let's have an honest conversation between us. Maybe you have messed up. Maybe you have slept with someone else or you have been having an affair, or you have been admiring another woman but have not yet taken it further. That is called unfaithfulness. Christ does not do that, and neither should you, neither should I. An act of unfaithfulness is a violation against your marriage, a misrepresentation of Christ and the church, This is where you go to the repair shop, my friend. It is open 24 hours. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This repair shop can fix any marriage, guaranteed. But the owner of the shop is not coming to you. Bring your broken item to the shop. Come with your brokenness. Come with your unfaithfulness. Come just as you are. Do not go to some quack around the corner. Don't turn to your friends who will not tell you the damage that has been caused. Come straight to the one true repair shop. Jesus will meet you there. He will never turn your way and there is no waiting period. The repair shop is open 24 hours. My friend, if you have any question about this message, contact me at friendofclyde at gmail.com.